cool uh, winter and today I wanted to make an all-encompassing list of Xenogears related merch. I saw there were a lot of people in the community that had no idea about a lot of these awesome items and so in order to attempt to rectify that problem I decided to make this video. This video will include all of the official merch and a couple of unofficial ones released from 1998 through 2023 as well as four additional items that are scheduled to release within the next couple of years. I do have a good portion of the items myself and so for those I will be showing them off on camera a bit in order for you to get a better idea of what they're like. I am relying primarily on my own knowledge but for certain items I don't know that much about or I don't have I'll be referencing the Xeno Collection by OPKIJ86. Finally I will be listing what I would consider a reasonable price to pay for these items and that will be in USD. Of course you'll be attaining these all second hand so the prices can vary widely with a number of them being released exclusively in Japan that'll be even more difficult. That said, if you're looking to get any of these, I can recommend checking out Yahoo Auctions, which is a Japanese auction site. You can usually get some pretty good deals on there, though you'll need to use a proxy shipping service, which, depending on your comfort level navigating the Japanese internet, uh, I would recommend either using Tenso if you have um, a bit more experience, or Baii if not. These services will charge a small fee, depending on what you use, but other than that, they're going to be cheaper by a long shot. <clears throat> So, starting with games, uh, the most important items regarding Xenogears are the games themselves. Uh, sadly, the Western gaming, retro gaming market has been a bit crazy as of late, so I can't tell you what the accurate prices are going to be considering that most people are overcharging by about $200. But, um, first off, we have the English release of the game. So, uh, there are two variants of this, which are the green box, which I have which has the edge here, and the original, which has um, a dark gray instead, and doesn't have the greatest hits. Look inside. So, of course, you have two discs, which are... Then, within, you have the instruction. I'm sure you can find scans of this online, but it's got some good info. Art's also nice with um, Wyvern. Next up, we move on to the Japanese releases of the game. Uh, there are actually three of these. Um, there's the original and then the two Millennium collections. So first up is the original. Um, this is just obviously the base game with language, uh, different packaging. Uh, personally, I prefer how this one looks, uh, and it makes a much better display piece uh, than the original box I, I find. Um, and another good thing about this one is that you can find it for dirt cheap. Um, I would expect to pay no more than $5 for a Japanese copy of this. Looking inside, we can see that in addition to the packaging being different, the discs are also different. I also like this design a lot more. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but the discs are uh, have like this reflective sheen on all the colors, not just um, the silver here, but you also have the inverted one on the disc too, which is really cool. Then the manual is much the same. Just laid out a bit different. Actually, this one might be a bit better. <laughs> also, not in black and white. Got some promos here for stuff we'll be talking about later. So, those are the two base uh, copies. Next up, we will be moving to the Millennium Collections. So, there are two variants of the Millennium Collection. First one featuring. Bay, and the second one featuring Ellie. So, despite the different boxing and the different disc on display, these two are a lot more similar than you'd expect. Um, they each have a different disc on display, but if you look closely, you'll see that this one has disc one listed, this one has disc two listed. So. If we look inside one of these, we 
will see that. Ignore this. You will see that below here we have the second disc also included in the first version. So, outside of the discs and the boxes, there is one difference in each, which is the two figures included. So I have not personally opened mine, but for the Fey one, you come with this admittedly not amazing art figure and a tiny Fey, which is surprisingly better looking than the large figure. <clears throat> Overall, um, this is this is our our only bar figure so far, <laughs> but. Overall, the um, the presentation on them is a lot better than what you actually get, especially considering the average price is like a hundred to hundred twenty dollars. I'd say uh, it's worth it to note that these are both um, Japan exclusives, meaning that this is upside down. Uh, yeah, the manual is also included in both, but it's just the same one as base game. So. This clue. Um, it's yes, so it's important to note that these two are exclusive, meaning that these are the Japanese releases of the game. So if you're an English speaker and looking to play the game with the Millennium Collection, uh, next stop, we'll just take a quick look into the version since it comes with two figures as well. We have Ellie herself. True. Uh, about similar crafting quality, which is not high, but it's something. Last two games we have to talk about are the demo discs. So, um, the first one we got, which is the one, the only one in the West, is the demo disc, which was bundled with Parasite Eve. Now, I don't have that game, but I do have the demo disc. Um, Basically, it's four trailers and the demo. <laughs> Xenogears is the only demo on this disc. Uh, there's a bunch of other playable trailer or trailers you can watch, but the disc basically takes you from like the opening in Lahan and up through the mountain pass to Saiyan's house. But um, you can also play as Ellie and Bart during that segment, and they're all like maxed out in level. It's worth checking out, I think, but nothing like crazy interesting um the other one uh i for price on this um i don't remember having paid that much for it but i also don't remember what the price was so i can't tell you what fair price is but i wouldn't say more than 20 bucks if that um the other demo being um japanese demo I got this one. I don't have a um, Japanese PlayStation to test it, so I don't know what its contents are. I'm assuming it's similar to the English release, but as you can see, there's a little bit more content on this disc. Um, obviously, Xenogears is listed here, but you have um, it's like nine other demos and trailers. But that's that's the Japanese. Um, and that, that's about it for games. Um, I think I paid like $30 for this, which isn't awful. All right, next we'll move on to the books. So I'll be splitting this section up between guidebooks and non-guidebooks. So we'll discuss the latter first. The first and probably most important book relating to Xenogears is, of course, Perfect Works. I'm certain that everyone in the community has heard of this one, but for completion's sake, I will include it. Um, it's got a bunch of lore, art, everything you could hope for as a fan of this game. It's an amazing book. Um, I'd say maybe a hundred bucks is probably fair for this. Um, you might be looking at a little more with as it rises in popularity, considering it hasn't been reprinted in like 10 years, but there's, uh, it's also an important 
to mention. There are two prints of this book. They're pretty much identical, except for, I think, this tag here. But other than that, they are the exact same book. So, so whichever one's cheaper. Now, this isn't official, but I did want to mention the unofficial print of this book, which is... There is a fan translation of it, uh, which you can find on Flickr, which was done by a fan known as Ultimate Graphics, and he translated the book and also photoshopped in the translations to make it look really nice. Um, so this is that translated book with all his additions to make it English, which is really nice. And the print quality on this book is also amazing. I will not include a link for this because the last one got shut down, but if you want a link, try asking around like Reddit or Xenogears Discord server, and I'm sure someone will be able to hook you up with one. Um, I got, I think I got this for like $60, which is amazing considering the print quality. It's also hardcover and the original's not. Next up is something somewhat similar to that. It is the 20th anniversary concert pamphlet, which is not actually a pamphlet, but a small hardcover book. You can think of this as a mini perfect works. So it contains similar content um, with some timelines, some concept art, which up until this point was unseen by anyone. I'm trying to flip to one of the pages with it. Where is it? There we go. It also contains some interviews with the various people um i think i found this for like 20 or 25 dollars which is pretty good uh and of course this is anniversary merch so depending on where you're looking it could be very expensive but if you're looking on a japanese site you could probably get it for 25 up next we have the memorial album thousands of daggers now this is a basic script outline for the japanese game so it's got little screenshots and text blurbs for pretty much the entire main story. Um, one thing to note is that this doesn't have the variants for different characters in the party. Whoever showed in the screenshot is who it's going to have the decks for. And it also doesn't include NPCs, which if you're looking for that, I will link a site in the description, which has all that information and more. It's better as a resource if you're looking for like the Japanese script, because you can also obviously copy and paste it. but. If you're just looking for this as like a collector's item, um, it's nice. I think I, I would say like this is a twenty dollar item, maybe twenty five as well. Um, it's a nice little book. Next up, we have the two manga. There is the four coma and the anthology. So they're obviously both a bit different. Uh, a different four coma is. Um, a series of like sort of shorter four panel comics that are obviously meant to be jokes if you're I'm sure this transcends the language barrier looking at most of these but yeah I love this shot All right, where is it there it is beautiful panel <clears throat> On the other hand, we have the anthology, which is has a few more serious stories. Um, the first one here about Sigurd was written by Saga herself. I would definitely recommend checking out a translation of it. Um, recently, I saw a bundle of these two sell for 4,000 yen, which is like 35 bucks. But that was a pretty good deal. I wouldn't expect to get them for that cheap. Um, for both of these, I would say you're looking at upward of $60, depending on where you get them. But you could probably get them for less if you're being pretty vigilant around, um, the auction sites. So the final non-guided book to discuss is this, which is a full-on novel. Um, there you go. A delight for anyone who doesn't speak language there are some pretty cool illustrations in the deer um
it's a side story prequel, which is also non-canon to know. So it was published shortly after the game, and it's basically this prequel side story on some desert treasure hunters who are looking for money. <laughs> um, so like I said, there's no translation of it currently. However, I have been slowly working through this. As you can see, I'm about one third of the way through, and hopefully I will be able to release that soon so everyone will be able to read it. That said, um, this book I would expect to be able to find for 10 to $15. All right, this one's a bit strange, so I'm just gonna add it here at the end of the non-guidebook section, but this is the Xenogears original soundtrack um, arrange, which is a book of sheet music, which arranges all the songs in the game for piano. Um, I play piano, so I was able to play a few of these when I bought this, which is the reason I got it initially. Um, it's in Japanese, so you'll have to know the Japanese song titles, which some of them is annoying, but, um, basically, uh, I, I've played through a number of these on my own. Some of them aren't that good. A lot of them are pretty good, though, so... If you are a pianist, I think this recently got reprinted in 2020, which means that the price on it is way down. I paid way too much for this, but I've seen it down to 20 bucks. So if you play piano and you're like Xenu Gears, I would recommend this book. Moving on to the guidebooks. The first one I want to talk about is the Brady Guide, which is one I don't have. So I'll be showing an image on screen. Um, this is the only official English guide out there. And I've seen it floating around 50 to $75, which is too much. Don't pay that much. If you can find it for cheaper, I would recommend, but unless you really want it in your collection, that is too much, especially considering the quality of the guide. <laughs> Next up is the Digicube guidebook, which is a Japanese guide. Um, overall, I can't tell you the quality of the guide since I haven't used it. It's got some fine um, graphic design, I'd say. Um, it seems like it's got quality content. I'm not sure how much in depth it goes, but it's got some pretty cool art on the cover of Veltel. You probably can't tell, but it's got like this sort of realistic um, render of him, which looks really cool. Notably, this guide in the back contains a Veltel paper craft where you can um, fold, <laughs> fold and paint your own uh, Veltel. Um, of course, the instructions are in Japanese, considering this is a Japanese guide. However, I have translated this, and I can link it in the description below if you want to check it out and perhaps make one yourself. That said, uh, I've seen this book for $20 to $30, depending on when you get it. Next, we have the V-Jump Guide. Um, this one is pretty standard. Um... It's got some low-rise maps of the game. Um, it's fine. It's a pretty standard guide. I'd say like 10, 15 bucks is probably what you could find this for. Now, in addition to the V-Jump guide, there are three mini guides which were included in the magazine, uh, the V-Jump magazine. Now, I don't have these, but I'll show the images on screen. And those are actually pretty hard to come by. Um, the lowest, the only time, actually, I can't even say lowest because it's the only one I've ever seen, but the only listing I've ever seen, each of them was listed for $40. So those are a bit rarer. First up for the music, we have the original soundtrack. This is a two CD set, which comes with the basic game uh, OST. I've seen it for like 25 bucks usually. In addition to this, there was a limited release of it, which contains an alternate box, a poster, and just generally looks pretty cool, but I have seen it floating around $100, so that's a bit much. Moving on, next up is Creed. Now, this is an album which is by Mitsuda, and it contains a small selection of songs which were rearranged with a sort of Celtic style. Um, I would strongly recommend listening to this track. You can find it on YouTube. Um, but if you want the CD release, I think it's only like one, uh, maybe? No, yeah, I think 10 to 15 bucks is what I found it for. 
Um, let's see if we can find the track list. Yeah, it's, you can see there's only 10 tracks. Um, they're all pretty good though. The disc has some art on it as well. Next up, we have the Myth album. There are three releases of this. It's an orchestral arrange of the soundtrack. First release is a CD with this cover I'm showing on screen. I've seen it listed with Creed for $15. Um, second release, which is the one I have here, comes with this case, which is cardboard, and it has the sort of um, little booklet built into it. Um, there's also on the CD, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's this engraving, which is pretty cool. I forgot how much I got mine for, but I've seen them listed on English sites for 35 bucks, which means that I wouldn't imagine you'd be looking at even like $15 on a Japanese site. Finally, there's the Myth Final, which I'm showing on screen. This one seems a lot rarer than the others. I haven't seen it listed yet, personally. So, if you see it listed for a good play, price definitely snap it up moving on to another one we have the Shinkaku vinyl which was released on the Square Enix website for $50 to celebrate the 20th anniversary it's got music from both myth and creed and it is currently out of stock on their site so you'll have to get it secondhand you can find it for around 100 to 150 dollars finally there is the 20th anniversary concert blu-ray disc which you can find for $65 in Square Enix's site, and it is still in stock as of recording. This contains the full recording of the concert live, which is pretty good. I would recommend checking it out, um, even if you're not buying the CD, at least give it a listen. Moving on, uh, we have this section, which I have labeled Miscellaneous Notable Merch. Um, first item here is the music box, which I'll be showing on screen. This was given out to certain guests during the 20th anniversary concert, and it plays a shortened version of the music box theme from the game. Now, I've not seen this listed for anything under $250, and personally, considering it doesn't even play the entire music box song, um, I would not say it's really worth getting if you can find it for like a reasonable price, maybe, but like, come on, you could have at least had to play the full song. <laughs> Another piece of anniversary merch, which was sold at the concert, are these keychains. Now, normally I see them go to from uh, normally I see them go for $100 to $150, but I managed to snag mine for just $50. So these are really nice crystal keychains, which are fashioned to look like the save and party swap cubes on the map, if I can get this out see there it's really nice like crystal this is the part of the video where I give you a comparison for how big my hands are um, here is my hand here's a Game Boy Color you do the math <laughs> um, I'll just leave that here for comparison um, they're pretty they're like pretty hefty and nice so I have this tag for the 20th anniversary Get the blue one out too, so you can see the comparison. Blue one, also really nice, of course. Next up, we have the six um, official keychains, which were released much longer ago. Um, I don't see these pop up very often. Um, but I imagine the full set is pretty expensive, though I did manage, manage to get this, uh, site and one for only $10. Um, again, here's the side-by-side. -side. <laughs> They're not, um, tiny by any means, but they have this sort of, um, character art on here, both sides, though the back is sort of smooth with, um, some text and the front is textured. Um, again, I haven't seen the full set. You could probably find most of these for $10 individually, so maybe a lot would be $50. Depends. Um, something similar to these is the set of five pins, which contains five characters. Some of them overlap with the keychain, some, some of them don't. And they all use the same art for the ones that are the same. 
Um, I also have not seen any of these listed, so I can't tell you what the price is. In this next section, I will be going over what I've labeled as miscellaneous, miscellaneous unimportant merch. Here, I'm just going to speed run the worthless unimportant merch that's been released that I only know about thanks to the Xeno Collection site. I won't be listing prices because most of these items I've never seen listed, and even if I had, I would not pay for them. First up, we have the 20th anniversary merch, which includes the clear file set, which is a set of three folders which were sold at the concert in 2018, the ticket holder, which was also sold at the concert, which is, as the name implies, to hold your ticket, and finally, there are two tote bags, which one is black, one is white, and they have these designs. Next up, we have the pencil board. Following that, we have the calendar, which you got as a pre-order bonus for the game in Japan. Uh, for the English pre-order bonus, there was a phone card, there's a sticker sheet, CD case, bookmark, posters, which there are four of. All I know from the Xeno collection is that the one with the perfect works art is very rare and expensive. There are a number of cards, which include phone cards, some laminated character portraits, a postcard book, and eight postcards. Finally, there's the data notebook. With all those out of the way, we can get to the most interesting section to me personally, which is the figures. In this section, I'll be ordering the figures by their release. Starting out, we have the Faye Bring Arts figure, which was released initially for 8,000 yen. Uh, he comes complete with a stand, multiple hands, and a second head with a different expression, as well as a can of Soylent. Sadly, the second hand price has spiked pretty high recently. I haven't seen him for under $150, though you might be able to find him for less if you get lucky. Faye, we also have an LE figure released by Bring Arts as well, um, which sold for the same price and released shortly after. Um, just like Faye, her price has also spiked. Um, she comes with some accessories, including the stand, second hands, a baton, a gun, and a second head. Veltal was released shortly after both of these and originally sold for 10,000 yen. Um, this one's a bit different from the other two since it doesn't come with the extra heads or accessories, but rather it came with two additional pairs of feet. It also doesn't have a stand, just the extra hands. So these extra feet, which are the ones I have attached now, are actually metal, um, which allows for a lot of posability. So, they're obviously weighted, which allows you to pose the figure in a lot of cool ways, which you wouldn't be able to do normally without a stand. Um, unlike the other two, um, or <clears throat> like the other two, I haven't seen this for a reasonable price uh, recently. It's also spiked. The best I saw was like 170, which is a fair bit more than I than it was initially. The next figures were released by Structure Arts rather than Bring Arts. These were model kits, which came in a pack of four. Which required you to build and paint them, rather than just being ready out of the box. Um, this entire box of four originally came for the same price as Ellie and Faye. And the four kits included were... Beltel. Vierge, Himdel, and Brigandier. So, um, each of these kits included extra hands, a stand, and weapons for everyone who uses them. Notably, um, this is also set to re-release in December of this year, so if you missed the initial wave, you'll still be able to get them. Um, though that isn't much of an issue since I've all seen these for very inexpensive on Yahoo auctions. Um, even You can find the individual uh, boxes here for less than the full set, so if you want to do that, um, you could probably find a good deal on that. Um, obviously, it's worth noting that these were not sold separately, but you can get them separately pretty easily. Now, moving on to showing off the figures themselves. They are... Get felt for this comparison. 
I had my friend paint them because I am awful at it, but... So, to quickly compare, um, here is the Delta, which was made by my friend. The Structure Arts version. And side by side, we have Ring Arts Delta. The one we just went over. So, as you can see, there's a pretty notable size difference, especially side by side with the Game Boy. Um, they're, in, they're a fair bit smaller. Um, Overall, they're not the easiest model kits either. You'll need glue if you want them to stick together well, and you'll obviously need to paint to prime them. Um, if you're not a model maker or don't have a friend who can paint them for you, I wouldn't really recommend them. Just to quickly show off, I will give you Vierge, which my friend did as well. Aimdall which comes with a sword, and his stand's a bit different since it's got this hook for the backpack that's on the, um, sort of pirate gear models. And you've got Brigandir, which has that same whip and that same backpack stand. Veltal it released recently after a two-year wait from its announcement. It sold in America for $200 from Square Enix, but you could get it as low as, and still can, for $100. There is one notable issue with this one though, which is that there are the decals. You see, the decals were a pre-order bonus from the official Square Enix store only, so if you did not get it through them, you will not be able to get the golden rune decals that are seen on all of the advertisements and part of it. So, it was a pretty messed up situation, so just don't expect to get the decals if you're getting a second hand, and I imagine getting your hands on the decals in the future will be very difficult. I do have the decals since I ordered from Square Enix, but I have not applied them just because I am afraid that I will mess them up and they are going to be rare. Here's the decal sheet. Funny story with this is that um, they actually forgot to include these in the boxes they shipped out of the figures themselves, um, and they had to send these out separately because the fans were going to buy it if they didn't. Um, looking into the box, you can see there are some additional hands, and that's about it for accessories. Now we move out of the area of release merch and into the unreleased merch. On the 25th anniversary, Square announced four new items that would be releasing soon. First, there is a figure of Marian Chuchu by Bring Arts. Its initial listing is around 15,000 yen, or 120 US dollars. This is set to come out in December of this year. Like with Faye and Ellie, she comes with the second head, hands, and a stand, in addition to an initial set of arms. They have the hands clasped together. Just shows no stand, but it's posable. The next of these announcements was Marie's Gear Zeebson. This is a structure art release, which means that it is a model kit, but unlike the other model kits, the plastic on this is colored, meaning you don't have to prime and paint it. This one's set to come out in October of this year, and it's listed at the same price as the others. Continuing on with Structure Arts, we have a new pack of gears. This time we're getting three Crescens, Maswell, and Zeno gears. Like the first batch, this must be painted and assembled, and the three of them are pre ordering for 12,000 yen or $90. They are also set to come in December of this year. Now for the final item announced. This one isn't as definitive as the others, but they mentioned they have a plans to release a new art figure, which is still in production. All we have is this teaser image which they shared. With that, we have covered every last piece of Xenogears merch that is out there. If you're looking to collect, now you know what you're dealing with, and approximately what you can expect to pay for most of them. I hope this was helpful to you. I know I learned a lot about the Nisha Obscure merch making this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.